Good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just uh, start off by observing protocol and saying to our main uh, feature of the day, which is our guest, Melody Mashau, we welcome you, ma'am, to all the captains of industry, leaders of organizations that are in our midst, and to all the ladies and gentlemen. Let me take this opportunity to welcome and say good evening. My name is Guilherme Teto, and I am the administrator of the Black Business Council in the Build Environment Youth Chapter, which means, in a nutshell, that my job is to ensure that the youth chapter is actually reigning back to what we are supposed to be doing as the Black Business Council for the youth. So I've got a temporary job, so I'm a casual employee in, in, in a contemporary language. And uh, I'm going to be working with my teammates. And on the team, I have got Uri Filwe, who's going to be our facilitator for the webinar today. I have got Usipo, who's going to be helping us in the background. As far as the technical issues are concerned, I've got the team of marketing and uh, communications from the BBCBE under the leadership of Meli N. And uh, I've got other guys uh, that will be assisting us. Panelo is on board, and Elaine is also on board, and the rest of the team. Uh, let me start off by saying um, you are all welcome. The purpose of our webinar for today will be outlined more broadly by our facilitator, who prefers actually to be called the problem manager than to be called the facilitator. I'm not sure of the difference, but hey. You know, when you're working with the young people, you just have got to be flexible and move with the flow. All I know is that there's something called the master of ceremonies, the MC, which in hospital terms was actually called the mentally confused. So we are where we are. So we're talking about the program director or the student I'm trying to. Um, let me also say we are having the first webinar, which is uh, one of its kind, and we are very excited. We are calling this series the CEO meter, because we have decided as the BBC BE Youth Chamber that it is very critical for us to allow the young people to interact with people that have walked the path. You know, it's always easier to speak to somebody that has walked the path and who's already on the other side, because then they are able to share their experiential journey regarding what have they gone through, who are they, where do they come from, especially within the black society where we are saying we don't necessarily have that many people who are role models or point of reference because most of us hey we are the first generation now kind of uh, business people it's worth off for those of us the young people and also the women because we do not necessarily have that much of point of reference so we will be in the midst of um, greatness I prefer to call it black excellence because it also gives you that hope that as a young black child sitting out there looking at the world that is watching you, whilst you sometimes become very despondent thinking that things will never work out for you, or even sometimes having the barriers of entry because of where you come from. Um, when you're looking at what is going to be happening today, I am sure that we are all going to be able to find ourselves in a position that says there is hope for a black young child in South Africa. Having said that, there is a saying in English that says the youth is actually the future of any country. And therefore it means to me that we need to ensure that our youth are involved in the mainstream of the economy of the country from all sectors. And I'm glad that today we're talking about the infrastructure sector which is actually the biggest spender when it comes to government budget. So we are going to be asking ourselves questions as we'll be discussing with the Umelity. But at the same time, I would like each and every one of us to have a pen and a paper so that you take your pointers. And after this, you take your own time as a young person and look at what Melody has presented against what you are hoping for so that your vision can become realized. By the way, nobody gets to be arrested for dreaming. So I always encourage young people to dream big and be able to ensure that at the end of the day, you do achieve your dreams. And it is people like our mom lady that will allow you 
to know that dreams can actually come true. And it's not just a fairy tale, but it can be achieved at the end of the day. So um, I'd like to invite all of you to be here, to enjoy, sit back, and enjoy this ride with us. But at the same time, before I even part off and hand over to Refilwe, I would like us to remember that much as there's a saying that says, the youth are the future, there is a saying, Yasu Soto, Erin Buchake Palesa. And the direct translation means being young is actually, or being youthful is like a rose. Today you are bright and beautiful. You are everybody's, uh, um, um, what's it, choice, because everybody wants to have a bit of you. And tomorrow you'll be older. So when you're older, like any other flower, you'll find that you become ruined in a way. So all I'm trying to say with this one is that much as we are talking about being the future of this country as the young people, we also have got to ensure that we don't forget the fact that opportunities come and go. So there is a plethora of opportunities that are out there, but if people choose not to take advantage of those opportunities, just be careful because tomorrow you might be older. By the way, the age of being young in South Africa goes up to the age of 35. So you might be thinking that today you are 19, you are 20, you are 25, and you still have got a long way to go, but trust me and ask me because I've been there, done that, and worn the t-shirt. Time flies. Before you know it, you are 35, and you've not been able to take uh, or leverage all the opportunities that are there. So I would like to invite all of us to sit back, relax. I don't want to take the center stage today and talk about the issues of the youth in South Africa, because I am sure that um, our facilitator, uh, Uri Silva, is going to be able to narrate to that. So having said those few words, ladies and gents, I would like to welcome all of you, and I hope that you're going to have a great session. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Refilo. Over to you, Refilo. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, TG. Thank you for the very well um, warm welcome remarks that you've just given. A very good evening and welcome to the inaugural BBC BE Youth Chamber CEO webinar. My name, as introduced, is Rifilo Didiha, and I'll be not your program director, but your program manager for tonight's session. The CEO's Meetup is an initiative by the BBC BE Youth Chamber to create a platform for the youth to interact and engage directly with industry giants and specifically CEOs. There's a famous quote from our former president, Mr. Nelson Mandela, that says young people must take it upon themselves to ensure that they receive the knowledge and the highest education possible so that they can present as well in the future as future leaders. And that's something the TG has also touched on. So this is the core purpose of the CEO Meetup, to acquire knowledge from people that have went through this process and capacitate ourselves as the youth to be great future leaders. So tonight we have a very special guest. The name is Mrs. Leti Majau, who is the CEO of Mutewo Construction Group, which is a grade nine construction company that was founded in 1997. And she's here to tell us about her journey and how she became the, uh, the CEO of uh, the Mutewo Construction Group. There's some interesting statistics. According to BWASA, less than 30% of executive manage managers are women and less than 12% holds chairperson and CEO position. So the biggest question today is how did she do it and what lessons can we learn from her journey? But before we get into the mood, we get into the meat of things, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very interesting conversation in front of us tonight. So um, before we get to, into our engagement, let us first go through some housekeeping rules. To see here, please let's use our chat box for, for taking questions. Questions will only be received via the chat box. And please note that slides and links 
to and recordings of this session will be sent to all the registered members and um, it will be published on the BBC BE TV YouTube channel. And at the end, please fill out the survey to help us improve our offering to our members. This is the outline of our, our, of our program today. What we'll play next is the video of, uh, that, that talks to the BBC BE, uh, our core mission and our benefits. Then we'll then hand over to uh, Ms. Leti Mashao, who will be the guest speaker and will give us the, the address today. We'll then have an interaction based on the questions that you've submitted to us today. And we'll also give the people that have attended, that are attending this event now to ask questions to the, uh, through the chat box. And then those questions will then be proposed to uh, Mrs. Machao. And then we'll have a vote of thanks from Mrs. Kidivoni uh, Zoloani, who will close the event. And we hope to be out of here at half past seven. I'm now gonna play some of the benefits and, and, and the core mission and vision for the BBC BE Youth Chamber. So please enjoy. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed that. I just want to highlight one or two benefits as you've seen in the video. As you've seen, BBC BE is a great opportunity uh, uh, for networking opportunity for, for networking with your peers and uh, CEOs such as Melody. It's also a platform to promote inter-trade amongst members. And that's something that we take very serious at the chamber. The other one is that we have pre-approval for public liability and performance guarantees and professional indemnity from the local brokers. So this is just but a few of the benefits that you experience if you join the, the, the BBC BE Youth Chamber. So, but if you're interested, after this event, we'll send an email and application forms for membership to everybody who has registered for the event. All right. So to the main reason why we are attending this webinar today, I would like, I'd like to now welcome on our virtual podium, Mrs. Leti Majao. But before she speaks, I just wanna do two things. I wanna play a video of the Motel Construction Group and then I'll read her bio just after that.
Last night, 450,000 South Africans slept in a house built by Motel. On your way to work or school this morning, the chances are you could have passed through a station refurbished or built by Motel. You may have even travelled by train on railway lines built with advanced precost technologies by Motel. All of this to get to schools or offices built by Motel. We estimate that over 20,000 students will today be sitting in classrooms built by Moteo. Today, you may find yourself in one of 10 MTN service centers that Moteo has built or refurbished around the country. Or in the unlikely event your car was stolen somewhere in Johannesburg, you might find your way to the Irritan Vehicle Safeguarding Unit, which was financed, designed and built by Moteo. Pretty good chance that the nurse attending to you lives in an accommodation built by a motel construction group. That leaking tap or faucet may have been turned off automatically by Mateo's patented AquaTrip technology. Not only saving South Africans precious resource, but saving South Africans millions of rain in wasted water. The solid waste you generate could be processed in a waste depot built by a motel. If you need an energy boost, grab one of these. Bottled in the factory, built by Motel. The Wi-Fi that you are connected to to download your new TV series could have had its fiber cable laid by Team Motel. As you switch off your lights before going to bed at night, the electrical work connecting you to the power source could have been laid, you guessed it, by Motel. At the end of your days, you could end up in a mortuary built by Motel. We tell the story to indicate that, although we remain passionate about housing, Mateo is about a lot more than just housing. So what started in 1997 as a small operation has developed into Mateo's construction, Mateo Civils, Mateo Water, and Mateo Telecoms. The word Mateo means foundation. We are building a foundation to house the people of South Africa. We build not only with bricks and mortar, and not only by putting roofs on hundreds of thousands of heads, but also by raising the South African flag high. A true example of a South African company. Truly empowered. Truly empowered. Truly empowered. Truly empowered. I'm truly empowered. Truly empowered. Truly empowered. Truly empowered. Truly empowered. We at Motel are truly, truly empowered. Thank you. I've been told that there were some technical glitches with the first video. Apologies for that. We'll get that at the end. Well, Mrs. I'm now going to read the bio of Mrs. Letima Chao. Post the tragic passing of Dr. Chanik Loru, Letima Chao was appointed the board of directors of Material Construction Group on the, on the 9th of September as the new CEO. Majao has been a direct, has been part of the Motel family for 15 years. He marked early on as Dr. Ndobu's successor. Leti has been closely mentored by Dr. Ndobu for many years. Having grown in the township of Malamulela Limbogo, Leti joined Motel Construction Group as a trainee site quantity surveyor in 2005. She is a civil and building graduate that learned her trade in the trenches of real construction projects over the last 15 years. She added, executive, she added executive development and project management programs along the way. She is currently studying towards an MBA, showing integrity, determination, and initiative in the workplace. They did took the opportunity offered to her by Mutewa with both hands. She quickly rose through the ranks. She's a shareholder and CEO at Mutewa. So prior to taking up the position as CEO, she held direct oversight of the Northern Cape, Mpumalanga, Limpopo, Northwest, Free State, and Pretoria operations. Leti has served on the Muteo board since September 2011, which, which, which oversees the company's national operations and strategic direction. Leti has time and time again raised the Muteo a character and industry 
track record, express the culture, ethos, and excellence. That is Motewo. Uh, lady, over to you. Thank you so much, um, Program Director. It gives me a great pleasure um, to be here this evening to share my journey, and especially with the youth, because um, when I look at my journey, it's, it's actually very interesting for the young ones, because where I am today, it did not start from nowhere. It's some, something that started uh, when I was 22 years. So I'm quickly going to go to my presentation so that I can then take you through my prepared presentation this evening. Okay. It gives me a great pleasure today to be sharing my journey of becoming the group CEO of Motel Construction Group and also sharing with you the journey that I had with Dr. Tandin Lov. We all know the late Dr. T. She was somebody who was full of energy always looking for people that um, are hungry to learn. And I was very blessed to, to, to have known Dr. Tandin Lovo because I am where I am today because of the role she played in my life. And that's why when I received an invitation to come through and share my experience with you, there was no way I was going to give or come with excuses. And why? Because I was also given an opportunity by someone else. So it's important in life that um, we, we always give back and, and make the difference to the people that surround us. Just a quick overview of, of Monteo Construction Group. It's one of the largest black owned construction companies in South Africa. Our black, our black ownership um, is 51.5%. And out of that, I'm glad to say 13% of the 51.5% is held by youth. And 35% of the 51.5% is held by black female ownership. Talking about the ownership, I think it's important for me to highlight that um, Post the tragic passing of Dr. Tandy, the existing founders made a decision that instead of going out to look for new partners, let's rather look within. Let's look at the people that were part of building this organization and give them an opportunity to be uh, shareholders of Muteo Construction Group. So, they then identified the people within the business and um, the people were then offered shareholding. And the people that are now the new shareholders of Muteo, these are young professionals and um, their roles ranges between senior project managers, uh, construction managers, quantity surveyors, procurement managers, um, financial director. So these are the people that they actually um, working for Motel on a daily basis to, to ensure that we succeed. In terms of our um, annual turnover, we, are a, a, we, we do a billion rent um, annual turnover per annum. And we pride ourselves all the time to say, we are truly empowered. And why do we say that is because Dr. Tandy was very passionate about um, black women um, empowerment. And in this case, Muteo is still led by a, a black woman. And, and that's why we, we pride ourselves at all time to say, this is a truly empowered company. The company was established in 1997 by the late Dr. Tandin Lovu. 
She had partnered with Chris Cadmore and Tim Porter. And under the trio leadership, they formed Muteo, which this year we celebrated 23 years of existence. These are the people that uh, built this organization to be where it is today. And the late Dr. Tandy um, always said she was so blessed to have partners like Chris Cadmore and Tim Porter. Chris is a quant surveyor by profession and Tim Porter is, the, is um, a civil engineer by profession. I was then mentored um, by Dr. Tandy um, when I joined the company in, in 2005. And I was earmarked at a very early stage as Dr. Tandy's successor, but obviously we were not looking at um, her tragic passing. It was more around uh, the stage when she goes on um, retirement. But unfortunately, things did not work out the way they were planned. The word Muteo means foundation. And each solid foundation has a chief cornerstone. In this business, that cornerstone was the late Dr. Tandin Lovu. It has been her guiding influence that has allowed this company to reach its current state of development. We are proud to say we have built over 100,000 residential homes across the country. We have a national footprint. We work in all nine provinces. In terms of our CIDB registration, we are nine GB on the building side, nine CE on the civil side, eight EPPE and seven EBPE on the electrical side. We are a level one triple BE uh, compliant company. And we are also ISO 9001 accredited. We are currently in the process to do the health, the accreditation for health and health and safety and, um, and environmental. Just in terms of what we do as Motel, we, we have a building division, a civil division, a water division, electrical, academy, and we have recently resuscitated our telecoms or fiber division. Muteo seeks to be a role model of how a black female owned and managed business can remain sustainable in the South African landscape. We want to remain an aggressive proponent of diversity in terms of gender and race, as we daily meet the challenge of seeking to, to thrive in a continually changing environment. From all the way from Malamlele, Limpombo, Lady got appointed as a CEO of Muteo in 2019. How did that happen? I joined Muteo Construction Group in 2005. When I joined Muteo as a young graduate, um, I was 22 years old. That's 15 years ago. I'm sure, if you add the maths, you can then see how old I am now. When I joined Muteo, I was looking for a company to do my in-service training in order to conclude my qualification in the built environment. When I arrived within Muteo, I was very fortunate because I was surrounded with people that were willing to offer all the young graduates the mentorship that they require in order to grow I had Dr. Tandy on my side, giving me all the empowerment that I needed in order to grow as a young black woman. I had technical people like Dries, Gavin, Tim, Chris, who were taking me through all 
the technical areas within the built environment. When I look back, I realized that I was very blessed to be surrounded by such people because today I have the wealth of experience to be able to take this business forward. Why? Because of the foundation that was created for me when I joined the company. I remember we used to attend so many things with Dr. Tandy and you, you know, she'll take me along on almost everything. And I used to complain at, at some point because remember at some point when, when a parent is guiding you, 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 you don't understand, you will complain, but um, a few years, you know, along the line, when you look back, you actually appreciate what they have done because you then realize that um, by attending meetings with her, observing how she does things, sitting in meetings, even if I say nothing, but just listen, that was useful. And today I can tap into that experience because I've walked the journey with her. Looking at the technical aspect, I was very fortunate to be uh, paired with uh, white males, uh, individuals who had more than 40 years experience in the industry. And these are the people that worked with me when I was running the projects within Motel. Because remember in the past 15 years, I worked as a site QS. From there, I was then appointed as a project manager. From a project manager, I then uh, got appointed as a director that was 11 years ago. So I've had a taste of each level. And today, when I lead an organization like Motel, I always tap into all the wealth of experience that I've accumulated over the years. And what actually assisted me to expedite the, the growth within this industry is the fact that the people that were allocated to me as my mentors. They were committed and it's people that were in the industry for the past 40 years. In life, we've got choices. When I was presented with an opportunity to, to be mentored by various people within Motel, I took it upon myself to ensure that I make use of that opportunity. And what do I mean by that? I had to work very hard. The train was moving. There was no time to, to be slow on what was expected on me. I, 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 I realized at a very early stage that I was very fortunate to have a leader like the late Dr. Tandy, who was very passionate about empowering women and empowering the youth. So she was very committed and she successfully passed her vision to everyone within Motel to make sure that people are given fair opportunities, people are trained, people are mentored, and all people are given fair opportunities. So I must say that that has really assisted me to be a better product in the past 15 years. And one thing that I would like to note um, as well is the fact that when I joined Muteo, Muteo was seven years old. And when I look back, I then realized that actually we, one was part of building this empire because when I joined, it was still a small baby and one was part of that growth. And it's actually good when you then, when, when you're then presented with such opportunity because you can relate with a lot of things. Why? Because you were part of the journey. The measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. And that's a quote from Vince Lobari. And why I've actually taken this quote is because when I look at my journey, an opportunity was presented. 
I could have chosen to abort the opportunity, but I did not do that. I grabbed the opportunity in two hands. And that's why it's important as young people that when we are presented with opportunities, it's important that we should not take things for granted. Nothing lasts forever. Every season comes and go. So it's important that when you find yourself in a specific season, allow yourself, give it your best, give it your best because when you then move to the next season, you might not have the same opportunity that you were given before. It's a choice to use what's in your hands. And in my case, again, I repeat, it's exactly what I did. You have a choice whose voice you, you are going to listen to. There's a lot of voices out there. And some of the voices as young people, we, we get confused because you don't know what to do. And some of the voices are there to distract us. So it's important to be clear in your head space on what you want in life and where you are going. It's a choice to work hard. Working hard means you show up prepared. That's very important. We can be given the opportunities, but it's important that we always prepare ourselves. Take time to learn what you don't know. That's very important. We cannot bypass the process. It's important for us to take time to learn what we don't know. Don't clock the watch. You are your own brand. Be proud of the work you do. Take responsibility for your own actions. It's very important as young people to understand that when you look at yourself, you are your own brand. And at the same time, no one will come and market your brand, but you need to understand that I am the brand and I will market myself. And I will continue to enhance my skills to make sure that I continue to be a better version of myself. It's a choice to listen and learn. Really listen, really learn. Ask for advice. Don't be shy to ask. Don't assume you can't learn from a tea lady. I always tell my team within Mutel that we are all very important. I look at the whole team within Mutel as a puzzle. And when you look at a puzzle, if you miss one piece, your puzzle is incomplete. Then it shows that everyone is important and everybody must be uh, respected. And don't take anyone for granted because you will never know where your answer will come from. That very same tea lady that you can, or you take for granted, it can actually be somebody that can open a door in your life. It's a choice to upskill. I'm currently doing my MBA and I felt it was very important for me to do that because as I assume and fulfill my current role, it's important for me to continue to be a better version of who I am so that I'll be able to take this organization forward. I'll read this quote again from Warren Buffett, which I found very interesting. Investing in yourself is the best thing you can do. Anything that improves your own talents, no, nobody can take it or take it away from you. They can run up huge deficits and the dollar can become worth far less. You can have all kinds of things happen, 
But if you've got talent yourself and you've maximized your talent, you've got a tremendous asset that can return tenfold. You'll never go wrong. It's a choice to engage with people or not. It's important to note that when you are in business, you need to then understand that stakeholder management is very important. It's important to engage with different people. And this slides basically is just reinforcing the idea of ensuring that you engage with people that surrounds you. It can be people within your sector or people within your workspace, people within your family setups. It's very important to engage. The choice is yours. Write your options and decide which route you want to take. No one else can do this for you. I have 10 tips that I want to share with you this evening. And these are the things that somehow they've also built me to a person I am today. I am driven or I always remind myself of these 10 tips. Number one, true identity. What do I mean by that? I want to encourage everyone who is here today to say, understand your true purpose in life. You must know your true identity. And what do I mean by that? You need to know who you are. And the fact that you need to know who you are, it's not something that will be done by your friend or your parents, but it's something that you need to own and understand that I need to understand who am I as lady. Number two, you need to know who is your creator. Know your true source. The source that gives you strength when you're down, joy when you're down, courage when you're about to, to, be, um, um, to be discouraged. It's important to always go back to your creator and that's your God. And I would not finish my presentation without touching on that. Why? Because I know I am who I am today because of him. So I want to encourage everyone as well that you should not divorce yourself from your creator. Number three, understand your purpose in life. You need to know why you are on earth and why I'm saying you need to know why you are on earth. You are not here to add numbers. You are not here to accompany other people. You are here for a specific reason. You are here for a purpose. Find your purpose and fulfill it. Number four, be clear about your true power. What is your true potential? We all have potential, but the problem is we want to be the next person. And in the process of trying to be the next person, you then miss yourself. You then miss your true potential. You then miss why you were created. So let's, let's go back and find our true power. Number five destiny. Fact about destiny is that every man was born for a reason. And you need to understand that your destiny has been predetermined by God, but it takes your personal choices and decisions that you take on a daily basis. You need to have a very clear picture of where you are going. Number six, that's the legacy. 
greatest investment in life is people. It's important to understand that your legacy should never be on just building. You need to build people. Build buildings to build people, not just to put your name. I believe true legacy is in people. And when I take that back home within Muteo, Dr. Tandi, the late Dr. T has built a legacy. And why do I say that? She invested time to build people. And how do we then see or confirm that Dr. Tandi was a great leader? That is measured by what is currently happening in her absence. What is happening in her absence proves that she was a great leader. She had time, she, she made sure that her vision is successfully transferred. So when you're running a business, ask yourself, what legacy am I going to leave? Am I really building people? Am I taking the mentorship serious? Mentorship is a long process, but there's a good price at the end. Number seven, it's leadership. True leaders don't focus on their, on their self. Good leaders employ others. Great leaders deploy themselves to others. We are here to serve. And you need to understand that as a leader, you will not be measured by how many people you are, are following you, but you'll be measured by how many people you are serving. So it's important for us to understand that as true leaders, we need to serve. And always remember that the greatest act of leadership is mentorship. We need leaders in this country who feel they owe it or owe or they owe a debt to the future. True leadership is not about power, but empowerment. And number eight, it's excuses. Let's stop giving excuses as, black, as young people. People become failures because they think their success depends on others. And we keep on giving excuses. Government, it's a problem. I'm drinking because I've got problems. I'm uh, on drugs because of one, two, three. And you know, great people do what weak people don't do. They don't give excuses. My success depends on me and I'll have to pay the price and take responsibility. So I encourage you to go back, let's stop giving excuses and let's make things happen. Number nine, law of process. Let's stop violating the law of process. The law of process has cheated many people. And what we fail to understand is the fact that every great man went through a process. In the school of greatness, you must be tried and tested. So it's important for us to understand that when we go through challenges, there is nothing wrong with that. The challenges are actually helping us to be better people. When you're running a business and you go through a phase where cash flow is a challenge, systems are a challenge, whatever challenge that you are facing within your business, it's important that you go through that process because that's what will make you a better leader. When you look at the 23 years journey of Muteo, of Muteo it was not easy. We had challenges. But today, when we look back, we appreciate the fact that all the challenges that we faced, they were preparing us for the next phase. And the last one, it's competence and excellence. 
Information brings transformation. Let's go for information. Let's go for knowledge. Get the wisdom that you need. Read the books. Read the books of leadership. Your destiny will not open up automatically. I encourage everyone to embrace the life of competence and excellence. And you need to understand that favor is when preparation meets opportunity. So we need to prepare ourselves for the opportunities that are ahead of us. Because if we're not prepared, even when the opportunity arrives, you will not be able to see it. How did Muteo sustain itself? And how can your business sustain itself? Number one, attention to details. It's important that when you're running a business, pay attention to the, to the technical competencies. Number two, look after your clients. You know, when they say your client is always right, it's because your client is very important. You are building a track record. And you don't want a track record that will be disrupted by um, um, a very bad record of how you have, you have conducted yourselves within uh, whatever opportunity that was given to you. Number three, reputation counts above all else. Complete all your contracts, even in the most difficult circumstances. I must say that we do go through challenges in certain areas where you, in the middle of the project, you realize that actually by the time I'm done with this project, I'll be sitting at a negative. But we don't abandon those projects. We make sure that we get to the end. We finish those projects. And that's what I want to encourage everyone as well to say, you will face some challenges where you'll be tempted to say, let me rather leave this project, but don't do it. Get to the finish line. Number four, protect your balance sheet. And what do I mean by that? Manage your cash. Manage your retained earnings. Manage your banking facilities. And it's important to understand your cash profile before you tender. You know, sometimes we are too quick to take on projects that we have not really applied our mind to understand the cash profile of the project. And that's what killed a lot of businesses. So it's important that you protect your balance sheet at all angles. Number five, manage and understand the risk. It's important that you understand the risk. Limit on the size of project we tender for. You know, in our case as Moteo, as much as people that look at, look at us from a distance, they might think that we take, we can tender for anything that comes our way. No, we don't. We always look at the opportunities, see whether we've got the capacity, see if we look at it and then see whether we've got the financial capacity to take on such project. There are projects that we've walked away from because we realize that we, we are not happy with the payment profile of that particular project. And we made a decision that it's better to walk away. So it's important that you manage your risk as a business because one bad contract can actually bring down the whole company. Number six, respect all your stakeholders. And your stakeholders is staff, suppliers, subcontractors, professional team, clients, community, you need to respect them. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot do it alone. And you need to respect the people that complement your success. Number seven, fair dealing. Always look for win-win solu solutions. It's important that don't always look at yourself to, to make money. Have a fair dealing and make sure that whether it's your subcontractors or it's your suppliers or your local community, let's think 
for the next person as well. It should not be just all about you. And these are the things that have built Muteo. I'm, I'm giving you the successes of the journey of Muteo. And it's not something that you will find elsewhere, but it's things that we talk about every time when we're given an opportunity, because it's always important to, to give um, um, or to share your journey so that people can understand the things that you have uh, come across along your journey. How did Muteo sustain itself? And it's important that you understand your place in the society. We need to give back. Let's look at the communities where we are uh, implementing our projects. Let's look around and see what we can do to assist those communities. Let's look around and see what we can do to donate. Let's look around and see who is there looking for a bazaar. Training is very important. Let's make a difference in our communities. As we build our businesses, it should not only be about making money, but let it be about building a community. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. And as I conclude, I would like to say the following. Every home, every heart, every feeling, every moment of happiness is incomplete without you. That tells you how important you are. Only you can complete this world. May your sunny and your enthusiastic spirit be with you always. Always remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Thank you very much, Program Director. Wow. Um, thank you, Sis Leti, for such a, an insightful presentation. Um, for me, um, there, there are a lot of key uh, themes or items that, you know, were thread within your presentation. You know, one was that you, you emphasized the importance of a mentor and you spoke about Dr. T and how she was key in holding your hand uh, in this journey. You further on talked about the importance of taking full advantage of the opportunities that were presented as, as young people. You know, further on you say that it's important to listen. It's important to listen to your mentors and the people around you. And, and what you then said is that um, it's also important to upskill yourself, to continue studying, and you've shown that with your uh, enrolled studies, the master's, uh, uh, master's in Business Administration. I think then you run it well with the 10 tips uh, for the youth in your presentation, and you, you finished it off with how Motel sustained itself. But what I found interesting there is that you can't take on all opportunities, right? It's important that we, we, we know what we can do and what we can't do, because at the end, what's important is to preserve one's reputation. So, Cecily, uh, thank you for that. It is really insightful. And we're gonna move into uh, an interactive discussion or uh, segment of this presentation with you to really zoom into some of these pointers. But before I do that, I just want to acknowledge some members that are with us today. I'd like to acknowledge Mr. John Mufuke, who's from SHWA, he's a SDNT specialist member of the Lift Professionals Development Association. I'd like to also acknowledge Mr. Robert Mbai and Mr. Joe Site uh, from the BBCB Council. Um, lastly, I want to acknowledge Mr. Hassan Sulume and Kekeleto Siluani uh, and members of our youth chamber. So we're now moving to the uh, interactive segment of this, um, this session today. 
And Cicely, if you if it's fine with you, please uh, have your video on. We've, we've we've compiled a couple of questions before this session, and these questions are from uh, youth members that just wanted to ask um, uh, these specifically. And the first one, maybe let's tie it down. Let's tie it with the mentorship aspect that we talk about, we talked about. You 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 emphasize the importance of mentorship, but um, I believe that to sustain um, a mentorship relationship, it must be some somewhat a mutually beneficial relationship as well. It shouldn't be a one-way road. So if you can maybe uh, speak about the importance of mentorship and later touch on how to effectively sustain a mentor-mentee relationship. Okay, thanks, Program Director. I think one, one important aspect that we need to understand when we talk about mentorship is the fact that mentorship is a long process and it does have a price. And it's important to, to understand or acknowledge as a mentee that I need to humble myself. I need to be willing, willing to be taught because one problem that I have actually picked up, especially with young people like us, I still regard myself as that, um, we, we like coming across like we know it all, which is a problem. And when I take it back home, in my case within Muteo, at a very early stage, I realized or I acknowledged that I'm working or I'm surrounded with people that are 40 years they are, they are holding 14 years experience within the built industry. And I, I, I really appreciated the fact that there's so much wisdom that I can tap into these people. So that is important to acknowledge at a very early stage of the mentorship journey, because otherwise you then always fight every idea that they bring on the table. And having said that, we're not saying that as young people, we don't have bright ideas, but it's important for us to know that there's certain things that we need to then tap into the knowledge of people that have traveled this journey before. So for me, mentorship is it's, it's, it's important and mentorship speaks to legacy. And in my view, without mentorship, there is no legacy. What legacy are you going to leave? Because when you, you, when you can stand there and confidently say, I've built a legacy, you must be talking about people. Legacy is people. Because you can build a very great company, but if you did not invest on people, then the day you are not there, that company will collapse. Thank you. Um, thank you. That's very powerful. So I guess the, the, the legacy should be seeing essentially your successor succeed in a nutshell. You know? then, then the other question we received is regarding um, work-life balance. Right? As a CEO of such a big company, how do you still find time to be a wife? How do you find time to be a mother, a daughter? and a general community member? Um, it actually, this takes, back, takes me back to the 10 pointers that I had raised around um, the things that I said, these are the facts about uh, that I want the youth to embrace. You need to understand who you are. The fact that you are a CEO does not mean you were created just to be a CEO. It's important to understand that you need to live a balanced life. And when you find yourself in a situation where your life is not balanced, you will not be happy. And when you are not happy, your work will suffer. I've seen a lot of people that they are so focused and obsessed in building this organization. There's nothing wrong with that, but they neglect certain important things along the way. While you are making money, you've now forgotten you've got children. 
You don't want a situation where you've made money and you come back home, you come back to an empty house. So it's important to find balance, to understand that when I go to Muteo, God has entrusted me to be the leader of this organization, to be able to move the vision of this company forward. I'm there to serve. I'm there to make a difference. When you then come back home, understand that you've been entrusted with these children. It is your role to groom them. It is, it is your role as a mother to pray for them. It is your role as, as a mother to pray for your family. So these are the things that you cannot divorce. They are important. When you then go to church, I'm, I'm one of the leaders uh, uh, at church. And, you know, people will say, how do you find time? For me, it's important to still serve God. I cannot be in a situation where I then say to myself, I'm too busy for him. Why? Because I am where I am today because of him. I am here on this earth because I'm serving a purpose. I want to get to a point where when I reach my destiny, I can look back and I can confidently say I am finished. And what do I mean by that? I have done my part. And when I look at my community, I should not be just a number. I need to be making a difference. There are people that surround us within our communities that needs our help and needing our help in different ways. It can be in a form of giving them guidance. It can be in a form of giving them financial assistance. It can be in a form of giving them direction. And that responsibility is not sitting with government. It's sitting with us. So that's why the 10 points that I raised, they are very important because they help you to have a balanced life because you then understand that you are here to serve and you've got a purpose and there's a reason you are why you are here and your destiny is defined, predefined by God. But at the end of the day, you make the choices of how you're going to live your life. Thanks. Thank you. So it's ultimately up to you to make the choices. So in the same spirit, we got a question from Lerato Mpanza, uh, who asked whether, Lerato Mpanza, who asked, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being a female in the sector? You know, because we, we always hear about the disadvantages of, of, of women on site, but I'm assuming that there should also be advantages for being female in, in, uh, leading such a, in leading such a company and participating in such a sector? If you can please speak to You know, as a woman um, program director, it's very important to understand that you are a mother. And being a mother does not only um, relate to the fact that uh, you are a mother to your own children. You are the mother to the nation. So even when it comes to um, the roles that we play anyway, our approach around things is very different. And, and, and that's why as women, it's important that we understand that yes, males are there, but not to compete with us. They are there to complement us because there's just certain qualities within us as women that you cannot buy off the shelf. You can't, you, it's born within you. And, and that's why everywhere where you go, where there's a woman, where there's a woman leader, there's a different environment. And for me, Mutewa is a great example of what I'm talking about, where this company was established by the late Dr. T. She was very passionate about building an organization that gives young people an opportunity to grow. And that on its own, it just shows that where there's a woman touch, there is growth and you, you want to, to expand. So, you know, when we then look at the disadvantages, we can't take away the fact that, yes, we are in the industry that has always been male dominated. And, you know, to turn things around, it will take time. It's a process, you know, it's a process. And that's why it's important that we forever ha have dialogues about the fact that we need to change the state that call. And in my view, 
it's it's work in progress and as women we need to move away from the fact that we think we need to do certain things in order for us to succeed in this space no embrace who you are and you will see that actually you are a winner and you can't compete with males males are there to compliment us not to compete with us so for me that's how i look at you know the disadvantage and the um, and the advantages uh, in the space as a woman oh, thank you thank, thank you for the advantage point you know that males are uh, that, that there's a complementary relationship and not necessarily that that they're competitors so i'd like to ask I, I see there's some participants that have raised their hands please note that we'll only be taking questions through the q a so please ask your questions through that platform as we will not be um, uh, taking hands. And um, Cecily, we are the BBC with the Black Business Council in the Build Environment YouTube, and we have members that have businesses um, at, at different stages. So my question is, are there any opportunities, you know, to partner with Motero and, and if we can also maybe focus on the low hanging fruits that um, the youth can take advantage of uh, with Mitewa. Okay. Number one, I think it's important for me to indicate the current state or the season that we are in as a business. Um, and I know it's something that is common to a lot of businesses. We, we're going through a very rough time. The market is shrinking. We tendering left, right and center, but the awards are, are, are happening very slowly. So I think in terms of the current, when you talk about low hanging fruits, we, 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 we're currently in a very difficult space because when you look at our, our order book, it's great, but unfortunately we can't start those projects. And why? Because the government is saying we've moved most of our funding to COVID programs. So that's a serious challenge because if there is no turnaround in the next two to three months, unfortunately we, we might find ourselves in a situation where we, we, we have to now look at how we move forward because you can't be in a situation where you carry all the people that you have and the work is not coming through. However, having said that, it does not take away the fact that Mutewa is very passionate about empowering young people. So which means the door is open for Mutewa to have engagement with the youth chamber to look at how we can bring in some of the people within the organization to be our ED candidates. I mean, as we speak, there's one that we've already identified from Black Business Council, and we are in the process of signing him up under um, Enterprise Development Program. And why we're doing that is because, you know, when we talk about empowering young people, it should not be a song. It should be, you know, it's, it should be something that everybody can see, you know. And for me, it's important that when we talk about uh, empowering young or youth businesses, I should be able to measure what I say and point out to say, here's a contractor that came in from level three and now he's proudly a great age because of the mentorship that Motewa has taken on with this specific, uh, this specific um, a company. So in short, I would say we are open. However, be cons considerate of the fact that the current season, it's, it's, it's difficult. And, and also, you know, this 30% um, local participation, it's, it's a serious concern because you can have people on your program to 
to give them opportunities. But every time when you go to a new project, you are stopped to bring anyone outside because they only want local people. But having said that, yes, it's, it's challenges that we can acknowledge, but it does not stop us from doing what we believe is right. So um, in short, Rifilwe, we are open and, um, and I can uh, confidently say we've already, already engaged one of, 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 of your members. Okay, well, that's, that, that's, that's great to hear, but we'd really like to follow up on the opportunity to, to, to have a discussion and to sit down with regards to what opportunities we can look at and uh, if there are any long hanging fruits, even uh, in this tough environment. So, so we'd really like to follow, follow up on that. Now, um, I'm going to move to the Q&A session and look at some of the questions that uh, members have sent. But the, the, the one I've picked up uh, is a very interesting one, actually. Um, it talks about the, the importance of, of ethics. You know, I believe that uh, the gentleman that sent this maybe has, has had conflict of uh, uh, an ethical conflict whereby um, um, he had to compromise or, or, or have to, or, or subjected to what we call, I guess, a brown envelope or, or a cold drink. You know, so I think his question is around um, how do you sustain, how do you manage to, to move forward, right, within the context of such an environment? and be ethical and still move forward as a company. It's really centered around that. Okay, that's a very good question. Um, I can proudly say as Muteo, we pride ourselves that we, are, we run an ethical business. Um, we've lost a lot of opportunities. Why? Because we were not prepared to succumb to the pressures where people expect us to um, pay them for giving us or awarding us opportunities. So it's something that as Muteo, we, 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 we've also posted it on our website to say, this is a business that we, we are free from corruption and we are open to be scrutinized. And if there's anything that you feel you need to bring to our attention, here is the open line. So how do we then um, make sure that we are sustainable? Because the bottom line is everywhere you go, most of the places, you know, you'll be told what's in for me. We then took a decision as Mutewa that we need to diversify. It's important to diversify and broaden your base of clients. Don't find yourself in a situation where you are only working with a certain number of clients, because if you then end up facing those challenges with the same number, what do you do? And I think um, the decision to diversify has proven to be working, you know, and, and, and that's why, you know, the change that we want to see in this country start with us as contractors, because when we continue to succumb to the pressures we basically saying to them, continue coming to us and ask for brown envelopes. But if we stand together as contractors and say, we are not going to participate in this behavior, we work for this money and we work very hard. I mean, it's very difficult to implement this project. We are threatened on site every day. They close the gates. You know, the local people can be difficult sometimes. And how do you then work so hard, come end of the project, you don't even make decent uh, profits. Why? Because you are subjected to those conditions. So I would say, if you are faced with such conditions, consider diversifying. And that's exactly what we're doing within Motel. And that's why you've got different divisions and um, our client base, we've uh, even broadened our private sector base. Why? Because we want to make sure that we've got a big pool of clients that we're working with. Thank you. And I think that's very profound, right? The, the aspect of diversifying, because if there's anything we've learned from 2020 as well, is that uh, don't put all your uh, eggs in one basket. You must diversify because you don't know what will happen. 
Yeah. So, uh, thank you for that, uh, I just want to acknowledge the presence of our CEO and Dr. Gregory Mufikeini. Uh, welcome. Now, we have another question from our TG and our administrator, Nikki uh, Limchet, who says Mutewo is such an empire with a very diversified portfolio. How do you ensure that all the different businesses are performing accordingly, especially? with a national footprint? Um, what we then do, we have monthly um, divisional ESCO meetings. And those meetings are designed to give us a perspective of what's happening in that specific division. And in the very same meeting, it then gives you an opportunity to be looking at all elements within that division. And yes, it's true. Um, I mean, we've got five different divisions and you with, with a national footprint, it's not easy. But what is important? You need to be surrounded with the right people. You need to have strong team. You can't be in a situation where you're running an organization such as, such as Motero with a national footprint, and you're doing a billion rent turnover and your support structure is weak. You need a very strong support structure. And that's why when you look at where Mutewa it is today, we, 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 we did not allow ourselves to grow very quickly. We made sure that our foundation or our base is solid before we started diversifying. So sometimes a lot of businesses that fail is because you want to be in a rush to diversify and yet you have not solidified your systems. You have not ensured that you've got strong teams. So it's important that you have a very strong team, you have a strong structure, you've got great systems. And in our case, that's why we, uh, we decided to be um, um, ISO accredited. Why? Because we wanted to make sure that we've got a quality standard that we use across the country. So when you have that quality standard, every site, they know how to deal with situations that any challenges that they face, because we even have um, a motel way uh, site where all the documents are, are, are posted. So anything that you need to do, it's not a question of now sitting back and decide how, how am I going to deal with this situation? There is a motel way which is there and people just need to follow. So that is very important when, especially when you are growing you need to have very strong systems, very strong people on board, people that you don't need to be on their shoulders every two seconds, people that you can trust. And you know that even if you are not there, but they'll be able to do what is best for Motel. All right. Thank you for that. And I mean, what I'm picking up also is that these things come, these things come with time, you know, and yes. continually um, revising the strategy, getting feedback and, and, and improving the strategy over time. So I'm going to take one last question from, actually let me just take two. Is Motel, this is from Donald Gomola, is Motel open to procuring from up and coming manufacturers? And if so, what have been the percentage of the spent uh, material inputs? Um. I would not be necessarily be in a position to, to confirm the exact percentage in that specific area that she's referring to. But what I can confirm is that Muteo is compliant in terms of empowering uh, uh, black suppliers and um, our spend in, and when you look at um, 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 the suppliers that we we supporting on under black ownership, we have over um, sixty percent. So I think in terms of a young, you know, upcoming uh, manufacturing company. Um, it's important that even when they come to Mutel, because you know, that's something I see with a lot of people. You come in and you want to take more than what you can chew. So I think what is important is one, yes, Mutel is prepared to support um, uh, those upcoming uh, manufacturers. And number two, 
In the process of empowering these companies, it's important for us to have that open relationship where you are open for Muteo to give you support where it's needed, give you guidance as you need it, as, as, as needed. Because you know, sometimes what I find is that people are not prepared to listen to the other side. And, and that's especially young people, and that's where the problem is. So as Mutewo, we've got uh, uh, women that we have, sub we have supported before, who were manufacturing uh, window and door frames. We've, we've brought them on board. We, we've put them under our ED programs. We've used our influence within the suppliers to go to different, you know, the builder's warehouse of this world to say, we've got a small supplier here. They are um, uh, registered under our ED. We need your support. Can you please support them so that any orders that you get for the same material that they are uh, uh, selling, you can be able to give them the opportunities. So for me, that's a great story because um, uh, we, 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 we did not look at this relationship as um, uh, um, a once of um, relationship, but we then looked at this company and said, you are young, you are upcoming. If you go to builders by yourself, they might not listen to you. But if Mutewa goes there on your behalf, we will then be able to open those doors for you. So yeah, we've done it before and we'll continue to do it. All right, thank you for that. I see that it's uh, 28 minutes past seven and uh, there are other questions, but uh, I, had, I had agreed to let you go at half past seven. So with all the questions, we'll just put them together and send them to Cicely and then she'll reply to, through the office. So Cicely, thank you. Thank you again for, uh, uh, for, for coming and spending time with us tonight and sharing all the nuggets of wisdom. Um, and, and we've really learned a lot. And I'm sure that a lot of, a lot of, a lot of young people um, have learned a lot and you know, found a lot of insight and, uh, and, and, uh, and so forth. So uh, I want to just to further iterate a quote from uh, Oprah Winfrey that says, wisdom is sometimes learning from those who have walked the road ahead of us. And I think that sums up what we had today. So thank you, Mrs. Leti. I'm now going to hand over to Mrs. Kidiboni to do the closing remarks. Wow. Um, that's all I can say as well. I don't know about everyone else who was on the webinar, but I, for one, am so empowered. I'm so grateful. Um, it is a true privilege to have been asked to give a vote of thanks for this wonderful occasion. Um, I would like to, on behalf of the BBCBE Youth Chamber and the BBCBE team, thank Meleti for reminding us of the importance of starting small and being grateful for each and every step on our journey. Sometimes we as young people are so focused on arriving and achieving that we forget how important it is that the everyday steps that Dr. T took you on site and took you to meetings, which at the time did not feel like were empowering, are actually part of what made you the wonderful woman that you are. And we truly do thank you for imparting your time to teach us, to remind us, and also just to be here for us as young people. We truly are grateful. I'd also like to thank each and everyone who took the time to be part of this one of a kind, very, very important webinar to hear from a CEO, one of the great companies that we look up to in the built environment. And I'd like to ask please that you complete the survey that is on the webinar before you leave so that we can also improve on our offering going forward and we can make sure that everything that we provide is suited for our audience and we can grow, we can only grow from this. And a special thank you to our TG and the Youth Chamber Administrator, Mekile. Thank you so much for your guidance and for your patience. We know that as young people, sometimes you try to run off, but you always make sure that we are staying on focus and on point and making sure that we grow as, as a community. Without each and every one of you here, this call would, on this call, we wouldn't be where we are. It wouldn't be a success as it is. So we truly are grateful on, and forever indebted Thank you so much and good night.